You aware of the fact that the urine from a person with type 2 diabetes contains so much sugar that it can be purified and turned into whiskey? This is actually how the Gilpin family whiskey is made. Living in this big blue world With my head up in outer space I know I'll be A-O-A-O do you know that you've eaten way more of these beetles than you will ever know? They are called the cochineal beetle and they are what's used to dye a lot of your food red. In 2012, some Starbucks patrons actually got very mad about this because they found out their strawberry flavored drinks like the strawberry frappuccino used these crushed up beetles to create the red dye effect. But little do they know that these little guys are crushed up and used in just about everything with so much as a red hue. And I'm not just talking about artificial foods like candies either. They are used in everything from meats to jams and even ice cream. More often than not, if you're eating something red, you are also eating one of these beetles. Dia que eu dei água para uma cobra coral, muito fofis com sede. Olha a beleza desse animal. Obviamente é falsa coral e eu trabalho com esses animais e não repitam. Somebody said to do yogurt. I couldn't find the comment, but um, yeah, so I made that comment for you. So I guess we're doing yogurt. This is a donut mold I've used before, but I'm just cutting the little tips off so that way it fits in my dehydrator. And yes, I'm using strawberry, banana, yo plate yogurt. And no, I know there's gonna be somebody that's gonna say, use Greek yogurt, it tastes better. It tastes like poop, okay? This yogurt is better. It's the yogurt of my childhood. The other stuff, I don't know, I just don't like it. Now I'm just gonna add some raspberries into four of them. I'm gonna leave two completely plain, two with just raspberries. And then in the last two, I'm gonna add some granola as well. This one's gonna be delicious. I know it is, I hope. I'm just smoothing them out. And uh, here's what they look like. Don't they look so pretty? I think they do. Let's plug it in, oops. And I'll guess I'll see you later. These are your calf muscles. And If you watched the video earlier today, you will know that I was pretty suspicious of these cultured freshwater coin pearls. They were marketed on the package as, and I quote, natural freshwater. Now I have two problems with this. The first problem is the pearl is not natural, it is cultured. There is a big difference and these are highly regulated and you have to use the word cultured, not natural. As a jewelry maker, if I were to purchase these and then sell them as natural pearls, I would be in violation of FTC guidelines. This is why that's a big problem. The second problem was the surface of the pearl just didn't feel right or look right to me. So I was very suspicious whether or not these were even cultured freshwater pearls. I told you I was gonna do some experiments, so here's the first one. I held it over a candle flame and technically they shouldn't burn, but it did. So I grabbed one of my real cultured freshwater coin pearls and I'm gonna do the same thing. I think I held it over the flame for about the same period of time. I'm not 100% sure, so if I didn't, please don't come at me. This one looks about the same as when I pulled the first one out. I dunk it in the water to cool it off. And then I grab my trusty Haggerty's care cloth to wipe the soot away. Now these are pretty wrinkly, so there is some soot built up in the wrinkles of this pearl, but for the most part, the soot came off really easily with no problems. These are a lower quality cultured freshwater, so you can see that there is a little bit of a singe that didn't come off which is why I grabbed a second one. This is a higher quality with thicker knacker cultured freshwater coin pearl. Again, I tried to hold it over the flame for about the same time, dunked it in the water to cool it off and grabbed my trusted Haggerty care cloth to wipe the soot away. This one was super satisfying, I'm not gonna lie. All of the soot came off in pretty much one wipe and no damage. So what's the verdict on the first one? 
<sighs> it's still up in the air, but I'm going to say no. These are some of my favorite things to anodize. I use titanium bulb bearings in some of my designs. I don't usually need to do big batches like this. However, I got a special order online. Even more fun, they ordered green, which is the very last color on the color spectrum. So you'll get to see all the different colors that I can do. Right now, we're easing into the blue and we're going to ratchet it up to the light blue. The electricity does not conduct evenly across the surface. So sometimes a few bulbs will catch a higher jolt and you can see them pop, pop, pop into higher voltage colors. From the ice blue, we'll drift up to gold, from gold to pink, from pink to violet. And now we're jumping straight into the purple, which is one of the most striking colors on the light spectrum. From there, we'll shift into the aqua and then the teal. You can see the reaction happens almost instantaneously. And while this is a good green, they really wanted the nice, bright, pale green. So I'm going to have to turn it up a little bit. And let's see, just a little more of a jolt, just a little more. Ah, there we go, that nice, bright grass green. That's what we're looking for. I also call it dragon green, just, you know, for fun. Well, these little peas are finished, but actually, if you want to come see more of this in person, we're in Chicago at C2E2 in booth 679 this weekend.